hey, we we got we we, right. we got a lot of we got a lot of people, a lot of souls that need to be reached. We have a lot of of love to show is 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 showing people lineage and color and race and 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 culture in the Bible more important than preaching what, hey man, sinners, you need to come to church. You need to, you need not not like come to church, but hey, let's let's pray for the lost, let's save the lost, let's preach the love of God, let's preach grace, let's preach mercy. Is that is that a valid reason to say why we have not heard this? Un for me, until now. Right, that's an excellent question, and uh, there are several there are several layers to what you uh, to your question. I'm going to attempt to address um, what I can. Um, so what I'll say is, so number one. Um, where, where churches had it right is keep the main thing, the main thing. And what is the main thing? The main thing is the gospel of Jesus Christ, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so what I would say to the preachers that are online, keep the main thing, the main thing, you understand? So, um, <clears throat> this format, this, this, um, lecture series is not something that we're going to teach on a Sunday morning. You understand? Because we've got to keep the main thing, the main thing, because if it is um, if if individuals come to church on Sunday morning and and they're they're on their way to devil's hell, um, they need to hear um, Jesus. Jesus needs to be preached to them. And, and you can go anywhere in the Bible and preach Jesus. But but um, the hope of Christ needs to be preached to them right now. Sunday morning is not meant to be the totality of the Christian experience. And, and I think the reason why, going to your point, why many churches are, haven't taught this is because, well, well, twofold, just deniability, number one. For, for the churches that, if, if, if we ignore it, it'll go away, right? And, and, and so, um, you know, we, we just don't want to teach that. It, it's, it's, it's better for us to accomplish our... Um, I, and I, I hate to, and I'll, Americanized theology or Eurocentric theology is better for us if we, you know, teach a message of kumbaya as opposed to because nobody wants to feel bad about themselves. That's the whole issue that's going on right now with um, with um, the uh, oh, good grief, the um, CRT, critical race theory, critical race theory. That's whole issue is going on crit critical race theory that you have all these folks that are fighting critical race theory being taught in schools because. Because there are Americans, primarily white Americans, that do not want any negative paint thrown on the pristine, inspirational images that, that, they, that they've been teaching our children. How inspirational it is that Columbus came over here and he discovered this lost land and, and, and how the Euro Europeans came over and, and put clothes on them and and taught them how to cook their food and because we were eating and even in Africa they were eating raw food and didn't know how didn't didn't close themselves didn't know how to take care didn't have good hygiene and, and Euro, Euro, Europeans came over and brought great hygiene and and um and really helped the land and the land and and we're a Christian nation now because you you all the boats from Europe came over and brought Christianity that's the story that they want to tell they don't want to tell the story about um, I'm not I'm not this complexion because um, it's natural. Um, uh, I'm this complexion because a uh, white men raped some of my ancestors. You understand? That's why I'm this complexion. They don't want to tell that story. We find out with uh, one of our form our former presidents that you know you know that that was just what was going on. So. So deniability is one aspect of why it's not being preached. Um, you know, we just don't want to talk about it. Uh, the other piece is we don't like to be, we don't like, like teaching. So many, many in the church, particularly uh, we want to come to church on Sunday morning and hear the choir, but we really don't like these types of discipleship opportunities where we come to get taught. This is where we, this here, what Lewis, the stuff Lewis is teaching right now, this is life changing stuff because I promise you, you won't read the Bible the same way again. When you read the scripture, you're going to be like, okay, 
you know, it's not the same feeling. You, now you're putting people and geography and all these dots are connecting and it's really, it's, it's making more sense. So when I say some things are meant to be preached from the pulpit, this is, it's kind of preaching 101. My, so for instance, my pastor, the first thing he taught me is there's such a thing as pastoral messages. And then there's, there's other messages, right? So, so one of the things that, um, that I would ask, um, uh, of the ministers at Limitless Church, none of the ministers at Limitless Church should ever get up and preach a message correcting the people. That's a past, that's a senior pastor job. You understand? So it's pastoral message. You get up and you preach the truth and you encourage the people, but you don't you don't whoop the people because it's no different if I walked over in Calandra house and started beating her daughter upside the head. You understand? That's not my job. Right? <laughs> Easy. You know, He's just kidding. And, and, my <laughs> job is not to discipline. My job is not to come in there and discipline Nyla and Sailor. That's not my job. You understand that? But a Don, Stacy probably wouldn't think twice if she heard a Don upstairs disciplining the girls for some reason, you know, because that's his job. You understand? So there's a distinction, uh, pastoral messages and and uh, and other messages. Um I hope I I hope I I'm someone asked you. So I, I just think. Don, the reason why it's not being preached, the primary reason why it's not being preached from the the European churches is because they don't want to preach it. The primary reason why it's not being preached in more black churches or or um, uh, churches of, of color, whether it be black, Hispanic or others, is fear. Is fear. It's, it's, it's totally fear because let me, let me go this because we spend so much time trying to be accepted in those circles. We, be, we spend so much time. We want to get invited to gateway church with Robin Wars. We want to be invited to, to preach at uh Saddleback church and, and uh, out there with, with Rick Warren, we want to be invited to, to, to preach. And, and so if I start preaching this stuff, they're going to think I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I'm crazy or, 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 and they're going to, and they're going to isolate me. Right. Dr. Tony Evans uh, said this recently, and I believe Dr. Tony, Dr. Dr. Tony Evans, he wrote a book about, um, about blacks in the Bible. One of the things that he said, and, and, this, and hear me very clearly, Dr. Tony Evans, I sent this image to Lewis um, in one of Dr. Tony Evans posts. He, he, boldly stated that King David was black. Now, if King David was black, Make it plain. Yeah, then, then we need to draw some conclusions. Yep. Does that make sense? Now, I'm not that invested, and, and I'm kind of like this. I'm always kind of against the grain type person. I understand the value of this moment, this teaching moment, because this is going to be transformative, not just for our church, but it's going to be transformative for all those that we touch. And, and again, it's not about picking on white people. It's, it's totally about the truth, because if we're going to preach the truth, preach the truth. Just tell the truth. Right now, are we going to get up there every Sunday and at every turn and I'm going to bring everybody's attention? What color uh, Solomon was and what color this and the other? No. Um, because I think that I can preach about the wisdom of Solomon, um, you know, I can probably talk about the wisdom of Solomon without necessarily pointing to his, his, uh, his, his skin complexion. But um, I do believe that there is a time and a space to talk about such, such things. Don, did I answer your question? And I, and I pray that y'all give Lewis the time back, the 15 minutes that I spent explaining that, y'all give Lewis that time back uh, in his lesson where he can add it on to the end. So we may go to eight, 15 30. or something like that. Okay, 8 30, right? <laughs> right, right. But but Adon, did I answer? Did I somewhat answer that? Yeah, I think just for the sake of right now, yes. But I I still like feel like uh like you and I should have another conversation just to just not not so like I don't understand what you're saying, but just to like we have un um so we have more time to get into more discussions. You know what I mean? Sure. Absolutely. Instead of using our time 
here as a, as a, as less than time time away from everybody else. Amen. Can I spit Absolutely. something out real quick to the pastor's first point? Just, just real quick. So the first the first point the pastor was making about why white churches don't want to speak about this. We basically want to keep the plantation uh, a pretty place. We want the white columns in the front, but we're not going to take you around back to the slave quarters. That's a fair assessment. All right, so um, just looking at my clock, it's 7.41, and so let's begin with where we ended last week. So last week, we asked a question, or I made a couple of comments, and those comments were, who are the Negroes? Is that what I want? Can y'all see that? Y'all see it okay? Did I lose you guys? Yes. No, I can see it. Okay. We can see it. Okay. Yeah, it's it good. It, was, it said it was paused. All right. Um, so last week we made reference to, uh, and a week before for that, we made reference to the fact that Ham was the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes. This excerpt is from Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Uh, many of you, uh, whether you knew it or not, have probably had a Zondervan Bible in your hand. There's probably one in your home. Uh, Zondervan is uh, next to uh, uh, Thomas Nelson is one of the uh, more popular Bible publishing companies. Uh, and in their dictionary, they say that Ham is not the progenitor of the Negroes. And so uh, today we're going to talk about, uh, about, you know, who the Negroes are, okay? Uh, so in the scripture, there have been distinctions made between those of African descent and non-African descent, even though they both shared the same general appearance. The Bible provides insight into this. Israel, Jacob, had a son, Joseph, that he loved above his other sons. He was a dreamer and told dreams to his brothers, and they did not like him. So now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, it says, because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that his father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. And Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it his brethren and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, here, I pray you this dream, which I've dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheep arose and stood upright. And behold, your sheep stood round about and made obeisance to my sheep. And his brethren said unto him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. That's Genesis 37, 3 through 8. Do you want me to make this a little larger? Can you ask this okay? I'll make it a little bigger. See it. All right. Okay. Uh, sometimes we get in our feelings when we see others being blessed by the Almighty and we are not. We express hatred to our brothers and sisters when the Most High is sh showering them with good things, when we feel like we should have some too. And the words of a dear friend, favor ain't fair. As we remain faithful, I, uh, as we remain faithful, I am, will remember our works and labor of love. All right. So sometimes others were getting blessed and you're not right. Uh, you just, you know, praise, rejoice with them. Praise the Lord for them. Right. You don't get in your feelings for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed toward his name and that you have ministered and do minister uh, to the saints and do minister. Hebrews 610. As we do our part, the most High will do his. No need to hate and envy others because Adonai has his attention on them. Rejoice with them that rejoice and be on guard for the spirit that was on Cain. But unto Cain and his offering, he, the most high, had not respect. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lies at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. All right. So we need to be on constant watch against bitterness. It creeps into our lives 
and it destroys us and does damage to those closest to us. Additionally, uh, one of the things that I have been asked is, uh, so do you now believe in black supremacy? So I've had some, some very sweet friends uh, who are white who have asked me that question. And so the answer is very, very plainly, no, I do not. And the reason why I do not is because I, I don't have to, I don't have to put myself in a position to hate somebody else. Even though whatever happened, happened, and it did happen. I'm not trying to cover up and I wish others would, not, would stop covering it up, but it happened. And I don't have any envy, hatred or otherwise in my heart for that. And so this teaching is not designed to create an opportunity for hatred. There are a number of other Bible verses to keep us on the straight and narrow, right? Uh, so, so just because a thing is true, does it mean because, uh, does it mean that I will behave in the same manner that others have behaved toward me? Does that make sense? All right. And make straight paths for your feet, lest uh, that which is lame be turned out of the way, but rather let it be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled, Hebrews 12, 13 through 15. All right. So uh, Joseph's brothers hated him so much and wanted to kill him, but Reuben said, let's just put him in a pit instead. Come, therefore, let us slay him. So these brothers hated Joseph, right? So much so that they were very ready to kill him, Genesis 37, 20 through 22, okay? Uh, but the oldest, Reuben, said, hey, let's just, let's just put him in the pit. And Reuben had a mind to go back and rescue him, but he was already gone, all right? Uh, as we know, the rest of the story, he ended up in Egypt, where he became second in command to Pharaoh. And there was a famine in the land, and the children of Israel uh, needed some food, and so Jacob sent his sons to buy corn. And the sons of Israel came to buy corn among those that came, uh, for the famine was in the land of Canaan, and Joseph was the governor over the land. And he, it was that told to all the people of the land, excuse me, uh, and Joseph was the governor of the land, and he, it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces toward the earth. And Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew him not. I'm going someplace with this, all right? Egypt is the son of Ham. Egypt's biblical name was, uh, his, his born name was Mizraim. He's the son of Ham. And who is Ham again? Ham is the progenitor of the dark races. So if Ham is the progenitor of the dark races, what does that make Egypt, Egypt uh, Mizraim or Egypt and he, subsequently Egyptians? Does that make them look like, uh, like Jerry or make them look like, like me? Like this you. is the portion of the class where you are interactive. They look like you. <laughs> like you. <laughs> you, Albert. So, uh, so then, why is it that Joseph brothers didn't recognize him? I mean, obviously Joseph was white, right? Because the folks who occupy Israel today are white, and they are descendants from these twelve. Let them say it. So, why didn't these? Why didn't these? Why didn't these folks uh, immediately recognize Joseph being white among all these black people? Because he wasn't. Because he wasn't. If Hebrews looked like the folks in Israel today, why didn't they recognize their brother? The answer is simple. Hebrews and Egyptians share similar complexion. So here are some images. Uh, this is uh, from the British Museum. Now, this is, an, uh, uh, this is Thoth the, in the center, that thing, uh, who is the Egyptian god of writing. So that means that these other folks who are around him uh, are, are Egyptians. Okay? 
me make this a little clearer. Here's another image. This is workers depicted in a mural at the tomb of Mina at Thebes during the 18th dynasty. All right, how about, how about this? How about this? These are photographers filmed inside the recently uncovered tomb of the priest's royal purification during the reign of King Nefar Ur Kare, named Watai, at the site of the Steppe Pyramid of Saqqara in Giza, Egypt. Am I missing anything? These people had a dark complexion. Egyptians had a dark complexion. They did not recognize their brother. All right. Another person who was mistaken for an Egyptian is Moses. Moses was raised in Pharaoh's household and the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river and her maidens walked along by the river side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she opened it, she saw the child and behold, the baby, the babe well. And she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he, that is Moses, became her, that is the daughter of Pharaoh's son. And she called his name Moses, and, uh, and she said, because I drew him out of the water. Again, Moses had all of the features of an Egyptian, okay? Okay, let's keep going. And when they came to Ruel, their father, he said, how is it that ye are so soon, uh, that ye are come so soon today? And they said, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water for us and watered the flock. Uh, Exodus 2, 18 through 19. This Egyptian that they're talking about was Moses. And he said to his daughters, and where is he? And why is it that you have left this man? Call him that you may eat bread. And Moses was content to dwell with the man. So the daughters of Ruel thought that uh, Moses was an Egyptian. I mean, it's easy to make that mistake, right? Because, you know, he was white and they were white. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So Moses, that is Hebrews and Egyptians, share the same complexion. Uh, so just to add some clarity, these images here, these are images of Egyptians, all right? These, these people here, these people are not Egyptian. Let me, let me keep going. Let me keep going. Uh, this person here is Egyptian. All right. Hold on. Let me keep going. These persons right here, these persons are not Egyptian. Okay. Negroes are not Africans. In a 1779 publication called The Account of the Origin of the Negro Slave Trade by Matthias Christian Springle, Professor Springle divides the history of the Negro trade carried on by Christians into two periods, the first from 1443 to 1645, and the second from 1645 to the present time, which was 1784. And let me help. When they say Christian here, they're talking about Catholicism. All right. He also adds that Gonzalez was the first Portuguese who in 1442 returned with Negro slaves purchased instead of Africans. Gonzalez was the first Portuguese who in 1442 returned with Negro slaves that he purchased instead of Africans. Okay, here is the document here. I will put this out on the share, not just uh, this, this what I'm reading from, but also the paper that is where this came from. All right. Um, Okay. There's a lot of. But this is 50 years before Columbus. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was Brendan. So where did he get the Negro slaves then from? He got them from Africa. But they weren't Africans. They were not Africans. Ooh, the plot thickens. Now, they what were... was their distinction? Well, I want to uh, draw your uh, draw your thoughts to the fact that Gonzalez didn't make the distinction. Uh, da, 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 da. I have this. Jerry, can I circle back around to that? Sure, sure, sure. No, no rush. So I just have, a, I have just an off the cuff question. No, you're good. I've got several documents open. I will circle back around because I have documented the account that occurred when Gonzalez made the trade with Africans for Negroes. They said, let us go. I'll bring you some more back. And he said, cool. And so he let them go. And at a certain time, he brought back 20 more. I have that in a, in a document here somewhere. But as you can see, uh, there is a distinction between, uh, between Negroes and between um, Africans. All right. Uh, this is just talks about who Matthias Springle was. Uh, so in more recent times during the period of the 1920s through 1950s, restrictive covenants were put in place to limit the Negroes' ability to purchase houses in the suburbs. Some of you may be familiar with this uh, time in history. White homeowners signed agreements stating they would not sell their houses to Negroes or to Africans. So it, the party of the second part hereby agrees that the premises hereby conveyed shall not at any time be conveyed, mortgaged or leased to any person or persons of Chinese. That's a distinction, right? Japanese, that's a distinction. Moorish, Turkish, Negro, that's a distinction, isn't it? Mongolian, Semitic, or African blood. The people writing these covenants <laughs> during the 20s and 50s realized who Negroes were. I submit this to you as evidence. <laughs> All right. These good Christian That's folks good. knew that there was a difference between Negroes and Africans, and they didn't want either in their neighborhoods. So who <laughs> are the Negroes? Man, you teach it, man. Keep going. You teach it, man. <laughs> With Portugal's expansion to West Africa in the 15th century, Iberian merchants began to recognize the economic potential of a large scale slave trafficking enterprise. One of the first to record the sentiment, according to Portuguese royal chronicler, uh, Gomes Ains de, Zura, de Zurara, was a young ship captain named Anton Gonzalez, who sailed to West Africa in 1441, hoping to acquire seal skins and oils. After obtaining his cargo, Gonzalez called a meeting of the 21 sailors who accompanied him and unveiled his plan to increase their profits. According to Zazura, Gonzalez told his crew, we have already got our cargo, but how far a thing would be, but how far a thing would it be if we who have come to this land for cargo of such petty merchandise were to meet with good fortune and bring the first captives before the presence of our prince. That night, Gonzalez led a raiding party into Cap Blanc, a narrow peninsula between Western Sahara and uh, Morantanaya, and kidnapped two Berbers, one man, one woman. Another Portuguese mariner, Nino Trasta, uh, Tristal, and members of his crew soon joined Gonzalez. Although the raid resulted in less than a dozen captives, Zurara imagines in his account that Prince Henry of Portugal responded to his enterprise with, with joy, not so much for the number of captives taken, but for the prospect of other countless captives that could be taken. While Gonzalez's voyage in 1441 is widely uh, considered to mark the beginnings of the transatlantic slave trade, it may also be viewed as an extension of an older tradition of raiding and ransom on both shores of the Mediterranean. Upon returning to Portugal, Gonzalez treated his captives in accordance with this custom and allowed them to negotiate the terms of their release. Rather than offering a ransom of money, the captives promised to give Gonzalez 10 slaves in the exchange of their own freedom and safe passage home. According to the royal chronicler Zurara, 
the Berbers explained that these new captives would be black and not of the lineage of the Moors, but Gentiles. Thus, in 1442, Gonzalez returned his Berber captives to Western Sahara, receiving as payment 10 enslaved Sub-Saharan Africans, whom he then transported back to Portugal for resale. I think that was your answer to your question, Jerry. 15th century Iberian legal traditions regulated Christians' treatment of who was enslavable and who was not. In contrast, the judicial status of people who did not fit these categories was ambiguous. Legal and philosophical arguments to address this issue began to evolve during the second half of the 15th century. Once Portuguese mariners began to return to Iberia with captives acquired in West Africa and West Central Africa. Notably, the treatment of black Gentiles was addressed in 1452 and 1455 when Pope Nicholas V issued a series of papal bulls that granted Portugal the right to enslave Sub-Saharan Africans. Church leader, leaders argued that slavery served as a natural deterrent and Christianization influence to the barbarous behavior among the pagans. Blessed be his name. Let's take these barbarous, pagan, naked, no food cooking people and put them in slavery. Using this logic, the Pope issued a mandate to the Portuguese King Alfonso V. We therefore weighing all singular premises with due meditation and nothing that since we had formerly by other letters of ours granted among other things free and ample faculty to the aforesaid King Alfonso to invade, search out, capture, vanquish and subdue all Sarkins, pagans whatsoever, and other enemies of Christ, wheresoever placed, and the kingdoms, dukedoms, principalities, dominions, possessions, and all movable and immovable goods whatsoever held and possessed by them, and to reduce their persons to perpetual slavery. The only thing that put them in this category was what? The complexion of their skin. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> so, so, wait yeah. a minute. Wait yeah, a minute. Go. So, go. hold on. Yeah, yeah. So, somebody just, somebody just wrote a law and said, because they're black, yep. uh, you know, we can own them. Nobody was there to fight. Nobody was there to 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 stop this it just somebody wrote it and stamped it and said boom by the boom that's it it was stronger than a law it was the pope it was the voice of god so that was the voice of god and it was understand way above this, that the roman catholic influence had overspread the world obviously there were some pockets of true christianity in places but the influence of of, of catholicism had spread around the world except well these dark folks that's the only thing the only reason why on the yeah okay it, tell them uh, on the meeting hello lord have mercy i got a headache <laughs> tell them on the meeting hello? <laughs> hello. oh i'm sorry i thought i was muted i'm sorry virtue. The Pope, by virtue of the color of the skin, could declare somebody an enemy of Christ. So this is the foundation of what's called the doctrine of discovery. Wow. You will find that every civilized nation on earth uses this as a, as a, found, as a tool to decide what belongs to them. So when, when, we, when we read in our history books that Columbus discovered America, guess what? That's not a lie. This is all part of the doctrine of discovery. He discovered America because he was the first white person there. This is crazy. <laughs> this, by the it's way, is taking uh, this European treaties bearing on the history of the United States <laughs> and its dependencies to 1648 uh, Carnegie Institute of Washington, D.C., by the way, 1917. I'm going to show y'all something. 
I'm gonna zoom this in a little bit. Mm-hmm. Now, but now understand something. Uh, a cartographer is a person who draws maps. Okay, and this particular cartographer is European. So this is someone who is European. He's not black. So this is not a bunch of Africans uh, getting together and saying, we're going to call our spot Negro land. That ain't what's happening here. These are Europeans who wrote out the, let me make it bigger so y'all can see this. Hey, um, hey, uh, um, Eli, y'all good back there? I see a Don preaching back there. Y'all good? Yeah, yeah. I had told him I was a little lost and he kind of broke it down for me. <laughs> We preaching. I see him preach. He's trying to <laughs> make me understand. It, this is crazy. It's this a lot of information. Y'all. Yeah, it is a lot this of information. Is like, what and in the world? It's a lot coming at once. Like it like, is. Like, oh goodness. It, it is. Um, I figured if I turn the water hose on, then you get at least wet, right? Where you can mm-hmm. drink oh, any yeah. of it at all, you'll get wet. But you know so, what? Can I can I say this in? Uh, uh, I promise, ten seconds. What? What no, really? Don't say ten seconds. <laughs> don't say. Just say. Just say it. It. Listen, ten seconds. listen, listen, listen. What really? What really bugs me is the fact that all that Lewis is presenting is he's presenting documents from institutions out of Washington D.C. and he's got other documents that 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 he will show. I don't know if he's going to show them today, but um, I mean these are published documents, and it's like. That's what bothers me the most. This stuff was isn't being taught in our textbooks. This stuff is not being talked about in our textbooks. They're not teaching our kids this stuff. No, you know, not. they kind of pick, they kind of pick and choose what they want. They didn't want to talk about the papal, um, uh, uh, papal bulls. They, the papal. They didn't want to talk about the papal bulls and and uh, all that and the doctrine of discovery and all that kind of stuff. It's um, it's a lot it of information. Good. So just another witness. This is a, um, a document that came from scholarly, lawman, uh, law, uh, scholarly commons.law.cwsl.edu, right? And I just want to read this, uh, this couple sentences. Thus, in Vict- uh, Victoria's thought, a racial conception emerges alongside a reconfiguration of religion. His account conceives of the indigenous people as religio racial civilization project and articulates uh, la, 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 articulates uh, nascent racial notions together with newly circumscribed religious rights. Uh, Calandria, you were asking earlier about, uh, uh, or I mentioned earlier about how, when this came to be. In the 1400s is when race became a divider among people groups. And by race, what they literally mean is complexion. They don't, they don't mean ethnicity. They mean complexion. All right, let me get back to wh- where we were. Stop that. And share this. Right there. All right. So as I was stating, cartographers draw maps. And this particular cartographer, his name is uh, 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 Bowen. Uh, Iman Bowen, 1747. I'll show you the whole map in a second. But I want to draw your attention to something. Not only does this section here in sub-Saharan Africa say, uh, say Negro land, right? But I want to draw your attention to the thing that circle. I don't know if that's fuzzy or clear or not. But K dot N, right? Or K-N dot. That's short for kingdom, okay? And then you see O-F. Right. And then you see J-U-D-A. That says Kingdom of Judah. Who? Who? Yeah, Judah. Yeah, he was one of the 12 tribes of Israel. Kingdom of Judah. Now, somebody asked, how did these folks get here? So in AD 7, just a real quick history lesson. In AD 7, under AD 70, under Roman persecution, the Jews fled Jerusalem. And in history, where have the Jews gone to seek refuge? That answer is Egypt, okay? But guess what? Roman rule extended to Egypt. So guess what these Jews did? 
They ran further into the interior of Africa. They ended up in the sub-Saharan area, West Africa, here, which is why in 1747, a new and accurate uh, map of Negro land was written or drawn by Bowen Eamon in 1747. It's right here. All right, let me keep reading. It's 811, and thank you guys so much for your time. If I could have just a few more minutes, uh, we are not far till we get done. All right. To ward off barbarism, uh, Christians captured and enslaved those in sub-Saharan Africa. The sub-Saharan area was called Negro Land, and the slave coast was identified as the kingdom of Judah. All right. Summing all this up, Egyptians who are Africans, uh, Egyptians who are Africans are of a people are a people of dark complexion. Historically, Hebrews have been misidentified as Egyptians. Hebrews and Egyptians or Africans share a similar appearance. Slavers made a difference between Africans and Negroes and chose the latter to enslave. Cartographers, that is map makers, designated the sub-Saharan area of Africa as Negro land. On the slave coast of Negro land, they have the kingdom of Judah. Judah is one of the 12 sons of Israel from whom Christ sprang out. So the question that we asked in the beginning, who are the Negroes? The Negroes are Hebrews. The doors of the church now open. Do you have an offering? Just bring it over here. Any questions? A lot of information. I get it. Any questions? Any comments? Any retorts? Any disagreements? Any whatever it is. Don't don't hold it in. This is what this this is all about. Put it out there for all of us to to, to hear. This is a this is a judge free. Your this is a trust a safe place. Feel free. So, Lewis, are we headed in the direction? Hello. That can y'all hear me? We can now, Kalanda, because you unmuted yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> can, 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 are we headed in the direction that the the 400 years of slavery um, foretold, pro prophesied, whatever, yeah. is the slavery of the Black people? So one of the things I like to tell people, that's a great question, Jerry. So one of the ways to identify people is by their promises. Right. So in this case, particularly the Hebrews. So in Leviticus, uh, um, Leviticus 16 and Deuteronomy 28, God gave the Hebrew people a, a series of promises and curses. OK. All right. Now, all those promises were for obedience. You do this. I'm going to do that. You do this. I'm going to do that. OK. Then God also gave him another set of promises, which were in the form of curses. If you don't do this, this is what I will do. Right. And right. so and so as you look at the people groups all over the world, all over the world, those that you can that those that you can analyze and review their data, that information that's available as you look at them, who do you think is most? And oh, one more thing. What we do see in scripture is that the Hebrew people, the sons of Israel, were continuously, continuously rebellious, stiff necked, hard hearted. They were they would not obey God to save their life. They were disobedient. They killed prophets and they had subsequently killed Jesus. Now, knowing about these Hebrew folk and their uh, proclivity toward rebellion. When you examine all of the people groups of the earth in light of these promises and curses, knowing that the Hebrews were rebellious, so they received the lion's share of these curses, what people group could you rightly, common sensely identify as a group that that promise that God gave to Abraham that his seed would be in captivity for 400 years which, which group do you, can you identify as Abraham's seed, just based on what we know about people? Blacks. It would have to be the blacks. 
the darker skinned races, black and brown? There are no other people group that are clearly defined by the curses in Deuteronomy 28. Nobody else. Leviticus 16. Nobody else. Nobody. Wow. Nobody. Their name is going to be a byword. They're going to be. Uh, they're going to be. Uh, they're going to be uh, sold into slavery. Uh, they're going to be taken from their land, and no one's going to. No one will redeem them. And be scattered. Not, not only that. Not only that. And let me show you guys something here. Uh, uh, well, well. Let me let me show you something. Um. Listen. Uh, the, um, they, they know, they know who they are. Where is my thing? Hold on. Not Christmas time, right? People don't know. Nine, 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 nine. Guys, thank y'all so much for your patience. Um, what I'm going to show you is the Ashkenazi Jews. They know exactly who they are. These people know, I'm gonna show you their documentation. I'm not gonna show you my idea or what I think. Um, I'm, I'm just as ignorant as they come, but I'm gonna show you this here. Uh, this, thank you. All right. Oh, I didn't know I had tabs, that's cool. Okay. Um, Timeline of Jewish history and heritage. This was licensed to this person here, oyeda.com, E-N, Ronan Rabaninkovic. So he's an Ashkenazi Jew. All right, this is their timeline. Let me zoom in right around here. I don't know if I can highlight that. Oh, I can. Look at that. Do y'all see that? Yes. All right. So the folks who occupy Israel are Khazarians. We went over that a couple of uh, a few weeks ago. Yes. Here in their document, they say, oh, yeah, these are converts into Judea to, to Judaism. 800 A.D. Timeline of Jewish history and heritage. Converts. Okay, let me find mm -hmm. something else right here. And you said this is their document, right? Yes, yes. Wow. So I Perfect guess- tribe Khazars convert and form Jewish state. Let me zoom out on this so y'all can see what this is. This is just a timeline of their history again, the diaspora. And in this timeline, this is, they say, uh, Khazars convert and form Jewish state. They convert and form Jewish state. They don't inherit, repopulate, return. They convert and form Jewish state. I still see the other document. Are you sure? Really? No, hold on. Stop. Okay. Sorry. I thought I'd learned something. Um, I wonder if I could get right there. Should be good. Okay, where's that? Okay, can you see the whole thing there? All right. So let me back out so you can see what this is. All right. So this is uh, someone went through and captured uh, from the land of Canaan all the way to present time, whenever that was, looks like the year 2000. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. Yes. And as I zoom in on this, uh, on this timeline, it says Turkic tribe Khazars, Caucasus area, convert and form Jewish state. Mm -hmm. um, um. My, the point that I'm that I'm that I'm that I'm bringing is 
the powers that be, they know exactly who mm-hmm. they are and who the black and brown people are. Now, as Pastor mentioned, uh, and I'll repeat this now, and it's a good place, a good place to mention it. I'm not saying that every black and brown person is a Hebrew. What I am saying, however, is that it is likely that a lot of black and brown people are. I showed you the documentation uh, where uh, uh, Mexico, Central and South Americans, uh, different people groups, uh, they have linked them to the 10 lost tribes of Israel. They left Assyria looking for, uh, looking for a new land. Can't remember the name of the land right now. And that's the same information that Columbus used to discover America. I have a question, Lewis. Yes. So to just to make it clear, when the... Um, when the Hebrews escaped to Africa to get away from Egypt and Israel and, and hid down in what's called Negro land or the tribe of Judah, the blacks, the Africans that were there knew that they weren't from there. And those are the ones that they sacrificed for their freedom. Yes. Let me, y'all got time for a couple more things. I know I've given you a lot of stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I have a question too after that. So uh, go ahead and ask her a question because I got to it's in one of these tabs. So I got to find it. OK, so my question would be so and I know you and Pastor said it. Um, it's a good chance that a lot of black and brown people um, are Hebrew. Then how do we trace and see if we are truly Hebrew at the end of the study? Right. So if I'm doing 23 and me or I'm doing all these other um ancestry things that are not owned or documented by our people how do i know at the end of this if i'm part if i am hebrew or not so i would so one it's a great question 23 and me is one of the ones that i've heard are less biased than others okay that said we don't actually have Abraham's DNA. We don't actually have, you know, Isaac, Jacob, Judah. We don't, we don't have their DNA. So we don't really have anything to compare it to, right? Hmm. So then the best way to identify the people is to identify them, again, I, I believe, by their curses. What people group is the most hated people group on the planet? If you don't think black folks are the most hated people groups on the or people group on the planet, why is it that it, that uh, May of last year, when George Floyd was brutally murdered by law enforcement, that the whole world erupt and talking about how they've been all mistreated, we wanted to stop the entire world, mm-hmm. not just Minnesota. They've been killing the George Floyds for a long time. Yep. Why was George Floyd's death May of last year significant? I believe it was significant because we are nearing the end of days. We are approaching the time when all of uh, Bible prophecy is about to begin to be fulfilled. God has said that there is a specific and limited time of the Gentiles. He says they're going to reign till the time of the Gentiles is over. At that point, he's going to begin to call his people. He's going to begin to wake them up. He's going to begin to call them to back, not only to himself, but back to their land. They've been killing George Floyd for decades, for decades. Why was May of last year different? I think it's because yeah. we're entering into an awakening. And See, why is the defensiveness and pushback so strong? Mm-hmm. Great. That's Definitely. Great. Yes, absolutely. They don't want critical race theory taught in school. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Uh, you know real- what? Jen Thornton messaged me today because she said there was a post about Greg Abbott on there, 
And I said, I just commented, I said, hashtag voting out 2022. She messaged me. She said, oh, Hot Wheels needs his tires flattened. <laughs> Oh, no, no. Oh, no. I know. That's I horrible. That, but horrible. 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 I know, that's but, a horrible joke. That, that was man is, Don't tell her I told you that. That <laughs> man is disabled. That's so horrible. Hey, I know, uh, I know. So, but but she, would, she would never say that in public. She said it to me privately. So. Hey, so, um, so Tadika, another thing is, is this. There are some tribes... Okay, there are some tribes in Africa. I thought Louis was going to touch on it tonight, particularly the Igbo and... and um, Yes, and I, I was going to talk about the Jews that went to India. The Jews that went to India, I think that'd be awesome. But um, so we know because there's a document that Lewis has from Henry Kissinger. Oh, I can read that right now. Um, that you guys need to see. And this was a CIA document from Henry, Henry Kissinger. We know that the Igbo tribe... Um, which was the one of the largest tribes in Nigeria. Okay. Okay. Um, that they are the ancient Jews, known as ancient Jews. Oh, and Not, this document he called them the wandering Jews of West Africa. Here it is, right here. Let me go back to the top. And uh, okay, so because my my question is, so my cousin, my sister, a couple of my relatives did the twenty three and Me, right? And part of the results, which is going to kind of align because we have, you know, same aunts, you know, maternal um, and our paternal is pretty much the same. So, but a good portion of it was, I think, like 25 or 30 percent Nigerian. I, I haven't went back to study what other categories they place you in once you get your results. But Nigeria was on my sister's results. Sure. Um, so it's like I at the end of the study, I can like, OK, I, I've learned all this. I can teach others. But then what if I'm not really, truly, you know, from one of the tribes? I could be just one of the black people, not a part of it, you know? So that's it's like, how do you so back where you where you came from? So to put it to put it uh, succinctly. There is no absolute way to trace your blood back to Abraham. Mm -hmm. so that doesn't exist. But what does exist is you can look at the among the different. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of the best word to use, but among among Africans, look at their physical appearance, not their complexion. But that's the mm -hmm. way their face and everything is made up. Okay. Thank you. For me, I can tell a difference between a Hamite and a Shemite on that fact alone. Okay. So mm -hmm. on that fact alone, Hamites look different. Just look, well, at, look at look at images. I'm not, I'm not saying Africans, I'm saying Hamites. I'm trying to be very specific. Right. Yes. Yeah, I, yeah, I was, I was, it's, I think, it, okay, so Tanika, you can, through those DNA companies, they can zero in on what part of Africa, um, you know, what percentage of where, of what, you know, what part of Africa you came from. Now, that's still not, um, I don't think you could be necessarily be um, just dogmatic on that result and say, Hey, I'm, I'm a Hebrew. Um, but it can at least get you within the vicinity to where you can know, okay, this is where the place of my origin, right. Mm -hmm. Or the large, large percentage of my, of my DNA. Right. So if it's Ethiopia, if it is, um, if it's um, Nigeria, different parts of Nigeria. And there are other places within Africa where there are um, a lot of historical evidence of, of um, Jewish, uh, the Jewish faith being practiced. I don't know that, the, that you will ever have that answer with DNA. I do believe that the Holy Spirit in these end times, um, that the Holy Spirit is waking, is, is awakening his um, God's people. Does that make sense at all? Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, at the end of the day, 
here's here's Janino. At the end of the day, no man will see the kingdom of heaven unless they accept and have Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior and have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Are nice. you under, are you understanding? Mm-hmm. So so even even those Israelites that don't come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior yep. will be will be condemned. Yep. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, right. because so, there, there's one um lady um that is that I follow and that I've worked with, and she's Hebrew Israelite, but she said that she does not now believe in Christianity. That's so dangerous. say again. That's that's very very dangerous. That's dangerous stuff. That's dangerous. see that's that's not where we're at at all. I mean because because the, the there's there's no other way you can be she she you know what she is she's a Hebrew Israelite she's on her way to the devil's hate. Apart okay. from yep yeah, apart from the blood of Christ yep yeah, absolutely right. she's on her way to the to devil's hell she that it, it so you can I could know definitively it, well, let's say DNA connects me just you know somehow we have the DNA of Abraham or whatever. And and I'm a Hebrew. Well, if I don't accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I'm going to spend eternity in the devil's head. Yeah. All right. So at, so so at the end of the day, when I when I said earlier, let's keep the main thing. The main thing that's Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's number one. Now, because of the depth of our lostness as a people, as Black people, the depth of our lostness, it's so sad that just. Generation after generation after generation, we just got lost, more and more lost. We know nothing about where we're from, but that's the curse. That's exactly what God said would happen. God said we would. God, the Bible literally says that that uh, that we would forget who we were. That's what it says. Yeah, it literally says that. No, no uh, th- that has happened to that has happened to no other people. No group. other people group. Yeah. Wow. I don't know. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you guys for answering my question. I, I'm just thinking of end result um, as well. So, it's eight thirty. Lead, lead, lead her to Christ. Lead her to Jesus. It's it's eight thirty. I want to show two more things for you, Tanika, up on the screen. Um, you mentioned Nigeria, right? Mm-hmm. Until the advent of the British slave, until until the advent of the British, slavery was rampant among uh, the Igbos. In early days, great numbers of these people were transported to America, the West Indies, and other places, and traces of their language and customs are said to still survive among the Negroes in these countries. Many Sierra Leoneans are descendants of Igbo stock. The first settled foreigner uh, at this place was a missionary, the son of Igbo parents, originally slaves, who after rescue uh, were landed at Freetown. I'm going somewhere. The suppression of the overseas traffic did not lead to the prohibition in the interior and slave dealings continued until the operations became more and more restricted. Until the rigorous methods now enforced, uh, now enforced, the day cannot be far distant when slavery will be utterly abolished. These are, uh, there are distinct differences between the customs of Igbos proper and those of their neighbors in guess where? Niger, Nigeria. Mm. Guess where, guess where Igbos were, were located in Nigeria? Igbo doesn't, doesn't ring anything for you right now. I can't show it to you today. On next week, I will show you that Igbo is, uh, is the same word for Hebrew and Negro, is the, which is the same word. Sorry, it goes Hebrew. Yeah, Hebrew, Igbo, Negro. That's the way Hebrew got changed. So it said, you said uh, uh, Nigeria. I want to show you this to show you that Igbos lived in Nigeria. Okay. Igbos are Hebrews. Igbo and Igbo, same thing? Yes. Different spelling, different. same different. thing. Yes. Thank you. Right. One final thing uh, before we get ready to close. Uh, there is a video that I will put out and Pastor, I think I need to edit the video a little bit, take the early, take the beginning of the video out and just show the substance of the video that you sent me the last. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. 
but in that video, the uh, presenter uh, read from a book called The History of the Jews, uh, which is right here on your screen. And this is talking about the Jews' uh, descent into India. Uh, the resident Jews, that is, in India, uh, were divided into two classes called the Jerusalem, or white Jews, and the ancient, or black Jews. I'll read that again. The resident Jews were divided into two classes called the Jerusalem, or white Jews, and the ancient, or black Jews. So wh who has who has the longevity? Who is the one that was from time past? White Jews, black Jews. Black. Black. The white Jews resided at this place. The black Jews have uh, also a synagogue here, but the great body of that tribe inhabits towns in the, in the interior of the province. This learned author thus proceeds uh, in, his, uh, in his interesting relation. Give me just a second. Computer mm -hmm. studio on. Uh, on my inquiry into the antiquity of the white Jews, they first delivered to me a narrative in the Hebrew language of their arrival in India, which had been handed down to them from their fathers and then exhibited their ancient uh, brass plate containing their charter and freedom of, uh, freedom of, res of residence given by King Malabar. So these Jews had... Uh, had, had uh, fled uh, as far as India to escape persecution. And there were two distinct classes of Jews, black and white. Let me show you a couple more things. This won't take long. Uh, the Jews, talking about the black Jews, preserve a Hebrew translation of it, which they presented to this learned author. So they had a translation of their Torah that they presented to the author. The Jews of Cochin, says our author, loaded him with, civili uh, with civilities and gave him a number of uh, entertainments. Though the climate had rendered them so swarthy, that is dark, they were almost mulattoes. They would have, con have considered themselves dishonored. He's talking about the white Jews. If they had eaten, drank, or prayed with the black or Negro Jew of Malabar because the last were descended from the slaves in the service of the Jews at uh, <laughs> Cranganor, who were afterwards emancipated. The other Jews grounded their aversion towards them on the uh, pretense that the Malabar Jews have been mixed with the Canaanites and Ishmaelites. So there's this idea that black folks have this Canaanite association. These black Jews, that is, which we do not. The black Jews retain the tradition that they arrived in India soon after the Babylonian captivity their Hindu complexion and their very uh, imperfect resemblance to the European Jews indicate that they have been detached from the parent stock in Judah many ages before the Jews in the West and that there have been intermarriages within families, not Israelitish, the white Jews looked upon. I'm sorry, the white Jews looked upon the black Jews as an, as an inferior race, not of a pure caste, which plainly demonstrates that they do not spring from a common stock in India. In other words, these white Jews and these black Jews are not from the same associations. Uh, I'll stop here. Um, so we went through a lot of content and I know it was like drinking from a, from a fire hydrant. <laughs> um, the point is, is that Ham is the progenitor of the dark races but not the Negroes. The further point is that Negroes are Hebrews. All right. So Andrew, you had some questions earlier. You you had no, not anymore. Okay. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I, understand. <laughs> I totally understand. Hmm. All right. Uh, any questions? It's 840. Thank you guys for your patience. Uh, for sticking in here with me, Heather, yes. I have a, a question. This doesn't. This is real. This is off topic. This is just um, me. From my experience, whenever I went to Ethiopia, and this is one thing I've uh, that's always um, that I was shocked when I got there. Okay. Um, they look different. Ethiopians look different. They're real narrow in the face. Again, this is like completely off topic. But no, it's not off topic. I, it's perfect. 
Um, so can you explain that? Yeah, so, um, so um, now you described a narrow-nosed Ethiopian. Yeah, they're real was, narrow. Was he, was, were they dark complected or were they a lighter complexion? They were like Adam and Pash Biden. Okay, so um, you remember when we're talking about Eden that Kush actually bumps up against uh, Egypt or Ethiopia and uh, and Egypt touch each other, <coughs> and there were infightings between the two, uh, and so uh, there's something about Nubians, Egyptians, and I don't understand all of that uh, uh, completely. Their features are a lot closer to Shemitic features than Hamitic features. And I know this only because the, the book that I've quoted from quite often, Dirk Mueller, he's an anthropologist, and I have an entire book where he goes through the skeletal and biological reasons why uh, persons who are the so-called African-American and, and brown folks, uh, the black and brown folks of America are actually Hebrews and he uses biology and skeletal uh, measurements and skull measurements to prove it. Um, we're not gonna talk about that though. That's way too, that's way too much. Uh, but just generally speaking, that's, that's it's possible. Anthrop anthropologically, that is possible. Of course, you also got to bear in mind, too, that there's been a lot of European influence in that area. And so there's been some uh, some uh, intermixing of the ethnicities. And so that it, that could account for a lot of what you saw when you went. Oh, no doubt. Lewis, there was a document that we read, you and I, and I, it, 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 maybe I read it myself, but it pointed to um, Europeans, they preferred... Ethiopian women. We did read that. Um, I gotta find that. It's somewhere in my in my treasure trove of, of information. Uh, yeah. But yes, they did. And as a result, uh, there were some who are not only uh, very fair complected, but they also have uh, European features, narrow noses, as such. All right. Uh, I like the question that pastor has asked every every week, and that is, is, is anybody uncomfortable with what we've discussed? Um, does anybody feel like they need to, a hard reset on their life right now? Because, hey, did, 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 if you guys haven't read, if you guys, if you guys haven't read The Making of a Slave, please read that. It's got really it's in it's out there in the resources area on the group the language is rough but really to understand why what's happening is happening why we are so docile why we are so submissive why we care, generally have an i don't care attitude oh why even try attitude the making, the making of a slave the making of a slave uh, I believe underscores the psychological conditioning of black and brown folks in the Americas today, and we're still suffering under it. Is that the thing that was the, that was written that you showed two, three weeks ago? That was written yeah. by the uh, yeah Willie Will Lynch. That's, yeah, that's heavy. That's heavy stuff. Man. Yeah. Hey, did y'all did y'all all watch the video of the um, Jewish rabbi? Oh, yeah. I, I, I somewhat. I somewhat suspect that everybody's not looking at the content but did y'all all watch the video of the Jewish rabbi and if so what did you think about it so Stacy's not in your head what did you think about it Stacey? Um, I mean I wasn't just tying along with all this too I guess I'm just not surprised because mom would always tell me um, and just some of the stuff that he said you know it just I wasn't, mom, mom, mom had always told me that, you know, space, it's just, that's where everything started. In fact, she gave me a colored, um, um, what is it, map? Can you give me, can you give me the book? Uh, colored Woman Bible is what it's called. 
I, I just, I didn't. Um, oh. Just, oh. Just so, so, so your I, mom, I, I, so your mom was yeah, was teaching. Yeah, she was. This oh. is something that she's given me, like ever since, you know, it, yeah, like some of this stuff and it, like the video pastor and then what, what elders unfolding, you know. Mom's already, mom has already told me all about it. I found it interesting when he talked about the gift and that we are the gift. I found that, um, um, I found that to be beautiful. Yeah. Um, knowledge base that we're the gift, you know, everybody's looking around and, and things like that. What I also do find interesting, and, and it wasn't necessarily in the, in the tape, but I do know that sometimes white supremacy and things like that, when they preach from what they call the, their, their, at their take on the Bible to their, to get the people to believe, they use some of the same verbiage and, and so forth, but they say, we are the ones who are chosen, not not us, you know, they'll say they are the chosen people. But what he had to say was was impactful, I thought. Mm -hmm. He said we're, we're the root of Israel. Yeah, we are. And he said the that gift and things are not going to happen until we, we, we have to be a part of it. We're part of it. Yeah. This is what he was referring to. Uh, I say he was referring to, I think he was referring to it prophetically. Yes. Because uh, that's, that's what we are. And God said he cut, he, he, uh, he used the Gentiles to provoke us to jealousy. And God's warning Gentiles here, hey, boast not against the branches for if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Um, anyway. Verse number, verse number 18, y'all, if you see it down to verse number 18. Yeah. Thou will say then the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith, be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also not spare thee. Yeah. 18, and, he, and he talked about the seed of... Um, the seed of Israel being hidden in Africa. He says it's in Africa. It's right. in Africa. Right. Yeah. All right, guys, it's 848. You guys are troopers, by the way. That's good uh, stuff. Thank you, man. Praise the Lord. Uh, Pastor, will you close us in prayer? Absolutely. Father, we love you. Thank you for the